Okay, so once we left off, we had gone through our checklist right here. We're doing a digression way up from up from way up here. We've done all of this stuff. We've done all of this stuff. Okay, use WooCommerce plugin for e-commerce. Well, we we've added the plugin, and then we have set up WooCommerce options. And there's various screens we'll look at here, but in short, some of them are going to be about location. There is um, there is uh, taxes, shipping. So all of this stuff that every other e-commerce merchant has to deal with. Uh, we have to set types of products because we have a variety of kinds of products we could sell. So there's a lot of little settings that we need to do right here, and they usually make sense, but let's walk through them together. We're on step one of whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six steps here. So this steps us through. First of all, where is our store located? Well, for my example, it's going to be in the US, but the default is the UK, so it's going to use you know, British currency. You probably want to change that then to what makes sense at the top there, and that's probably the USA. So find that right there. Now the address and address line and all of this, well, we have a listing here. I, what type of products do you plan to sell? I plan to sell both, physical and digital. If I set this to only digital, this address that you write up here is not relevant. If you have it set to physical, it is, and if it's set to both, it is. The reason for this is, if you're going to sell physical products, are you going to ship them? Are they going to be picked up at your store? How are you going to get those physical products to the person? If you've got it to digital, well, I'm selling maybe an ebook that you just send on the internet, or uh, I'm selling my music file. So whatever makes sense for you right here, you will select. About uh, services, like a travel agency? That's, that's a good point. It, it's not exactly a digital product, but it's not a tangible product. So I would put it under digital still, because it's not a physical thing. You're not giving a, you're not, the, physic, the service is not a physical thing. It's not exactly digital. You're obviously going to perform a service, but the point of this is that on a different screen it will say, okay, because you are shipping real things, we have more settings to set. Since your product is not a real thing, maybe they should call this, you know, not just digital, but intangible things. Yes? Do you have to use a real address? No. For the purposes of the class, you can make it up. If you were doing this on a real website, well, I'm setting this to digital, and I'll just click let's go. I'm not selling a physical thing that is going to need shipping and handling and such. Part of the reason it asks you for that is so that it can calculate how much will the shipping and handling be. You're going to sell your thing from your house. It needs an address to calculate that. But in real life, would you have to use a real In real life, I would put a real thing, because if you're doing customer service, if you need to respond to people, um, however, the thing about it is how much, how many, <coughs> am I going to get letters in the mail asking for help? Am I going to answer via email? So it's up to people, but if you, if you put 123 Fake Street, that's fine. It's not going to prevent it from letting you make the site. It's just that this information wouldn't be real for your customers. How did you get this page? It was there automatically before we left the room, so where did you...
the, the question here about this address, if, if it's important for your customers to see it, you could have it be shown. If it's not important, you don't have to show it. And then again, if you don't want to put it, you don't have to put it either. It's not a requirement. So is this address There's going to be a setting somewhere, I believe, where you then set it to be public or not. So for some people, we do want it to be public because my business is on Main Street. But for me, I'm running it out of my bedroom. I don't want that to be public. So you can omit that or um, put it fake. If you put it for as a real address, uh, I believe there is a spot for you to set it to public or not. And then, then I noticed here, I will be selling services. So yeah, that answers that. Um, Whatever this is set to, still, then we have that extra setting there. So if I'm only selling services, like I'm a guest speaker, motivational speaker, I mean, I would still put it on digital and then put it, I will sell services. For the class, I'm going to leave it on the first one just to show all possibilities. And all of this can be changed, of course. This wizard right now walks us through a process, but all of this can be set again later or changed later. And so I will click Let's Go. I get a pop-up about, would you like to help WooCommerce, statistics, and whatever. I'll say no, I'll just don't, don't turn on. I, I'm not going to turn on the check mark. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. I'll just click no and continue. Okay, so then we've got payment. We, we have these ways for people to be able to pay you. If you scroll down here, offline payment. So are you going to accept COD? Does, does anyone even do that anymore? Um, then we have checks and so forth. So you probably don't want most of these. Everyone's got their own use case scenario. So if it makes sense to you, you might do it or not. And again, all of this can be changed and updated and removed whenever you want. The other ways to pay here, we've got Stripe, which in my case is automatically turned on. And we've got Square and PayPal. So any of these payment methods will work. The, the thing is that you need to create an account with these companies, and then you link your bank. Now, these three are legitimate. People always are wary about putting their information online, especially credit cards or bank info. Of course, you should be. But these three are specifically focused on payment transactions and such. And they are very big. They are very famous. PayPal, for example, is like over 20 years old. Square is also very big, and it has very good security. Stripe is the newest one, but it, it also is like one of the big ones at the moment. So any of these will work to accept payments. And the only thing I will really say here is that you know you can turn on more than one of these. And these will need an extra little bit of setup. Well, let's say we did this. Let's say I wanted to use PayPal. Let's say I've heard of PayPal, but not the others. So you can turn one off. And then it says with PayPal. OK, in order for this to work, add your PayPal email address. How many of you have a PayPal account? So not too many people. That's fine. That's, that's usually the average that I'm not selling things, or I, I've never used PayPal to buy things and such. I don't have one. Well, this is the part where I'll put in the notes that with payment, the way payments work is you need some sort of middleman to take the money from the person buying the thing and putting your, that money into your bank account. There's always someone in the middle. When you go buy at Target or Walmart or wherever, you swipe your card and, you, and you're done. But what's happening is that that little card reader is owned by some credit card company that scans your data on the card and then tells your bank to take the money out and put it into Target's bank. So there's always someone in the middle transacting that money. And what we will say about this is regarding payment methods, any of the three listed is good and will work. I personally have the most experience with PayPal. 
PayPal is the most famous. I wouldn't say it's the best or the worst or whatever. It's just been around the longest. It has, um, you know, a lot of security during the payment transaction and all of that. And set up to use, you will need to supply your PayPal email. That assumes you have a PayPal account. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to do like a, a, a segue to let's go to PayPal. No, you're going to do that on your own. You go to PayPal.com, you go through the process of setting it up, and then that will have you link your credit card or your debit card, your bank, whatever. And then what it's asking you for you here is put the email address where you are going to have like the escrow account, sort of, where are you going to have the money uh, sent. So right here. Uh, don't type this, but this is my PayPal email. If you want to send me money, send money right there. <laughs> Very easy. So let's say here, this is fake. This is not a real address. But if I go to PayPal.com on my own, and then I go create an account, I have an email address to access PayPal. I just put the email here. Your users will not see this. It's just behind the scenes. When the person is going to the checkout screen and click pay, the payment stuff happens for them, and then behind the scenes, PayPal will send you the money. So that's the short answer of that. But we don't see square. I'm not using square, so I'm not. But why we don't see and you see? Why do we see something that we don't care about? Not showing to our... Yeah, we're not using square. So I'm not sure why it's not visible. We're not going to use square. So it doesn't even matter if it's there or not. I'm not sure why it's not showing it. Maybe like I have no idea why it's not showing. Like this, these are the defaults right here. So if it doesn't show you the defaults, I'm not sure why it's not showing it. We're not using Square. I'm not worried about it. So <clears throat> right here, because our account is not even going to be real, it's not on the real internet. You can make this up. I can put fake at fake.com. Whatever. I just need to click it activate PayPal, put something there, and then later on it'll be a real account once you set up your PayPal. There's a little note right here. The following plugins will be installed and activated for you. So as we go through this wizard, we're going to activate various features, and it may then say other, <coughs> it may then say other, um, other plugins are necessary. That's pretty common. You you use one plugin, but then that plugin might rely on other plugins. So here we're also going to add the oh the PayPal checkout gateway. So because we are going to add an extra feature of WooCommerce, that's an extra plugin, or three I guess. Also WooCommerce services and Jetpack. So if I'm going to use PayPal, these three will also be activated. That's fine. I want it to work. If I see Stripe and turn that one on, uh, it says it'll do that. And then if I see Square and I turn it, that'll do that. So just, just be aware of that, that you often install a theme and it gives you more plugins, or you often install a plugin and it gives you more plugins. That's normal. Are those plugins also with the theme? Or? The most plugins are like this nowadays that they're usually free. And most of the things you need to do with them are free, but then some of the extra things that you might pay for. So adding those, they might charge No, and that's, that's not what I said. I said that if you need extra features, then you choose to pay. Oh, okay. So out of these, these free ones, the free aspect should work perfectly fine. But then if there's like a little bit of an extra feature that you might like to add onto it, then you might want to pay but you're not going to be charged for using these. It installs everything that is totally free, and then you can choose to upgrade to the, to the paid stuff. Let's click Continue. So I'm going to turn on PayPal, put in whatever fake email right there, and continue. So it'll think for a moment, because it's going to download those other plugins, install them, activate them. It'll take us to the next screen in just a moment for shipping. So you don't have to go back and add those plugins. This is doing it for you, right? Yes. Okay.
for, for WooCommerce to fully work with PayPal, it needs a couple more plugins. This is doing it for us. Because again, in the old days, um, we would have to do this ourselves. And now it's part of the wizard. And this can also be done after the fact. Let's say later, right now I put Stripe, but then later on I want to add PayPal. I'll show you where you can do that. Because all of this is just basically a nice, friendly uh, interface from their settings screen. Okay, so we get shipping. We've created two shipping zones for the US and the rest of the world. Below you can set up flat rate. Okay, so this is more of this depending. You may see this, you may not. If you chose only digital products, then you won't see this, of course. You're not going to put your ebook in the mail in the post office and send it to them. But because I chose to show that I'm going to sell digital and real goods, it shows me this. And for Victor's Bakery, fictional business, that's one of the ideas. I'm going to be selling my, my, my baked goods through the internet. So I get this sort of screen. There's a check mark here about, do I want to print shipping labels at home so I don't have to go to the post office? Well, that, that's going to be a little bit of an extra feature. That's easy to turn on. The zones, okay, so if I'm shipping throughout the U.S. or shipping outside of the U.S., how much am I going to charge? Free shipping or not free shipping? Then we've got these options about is the shipping going to be included in the product and such? How much am I going to ship? Let's say if I put $5 there. So this is one of the things that I cannot give you the answer to. I can just kind of explain what we're looking at. And this is a flat rate this might not be the best solution for everyone. I'm shipping three cupcakes for $5, whereas I'm shipping three birthday cakes for $5. For one, $5 is too much. For the other, it's too little. So this is some of these things to think about. When we are our own business, we need to deal with this. When I buy something off of Amazon, it's kind of automatic. I just give them my, my credit card, and they have the calculations, and they charge me. We now have to figure this stuff out. And on another screen, if I really want to really make it based on weight and live rates, notice right here, if you'd like to offer live rates from a specific carrier, you can find a variety of extensions going here. So I'm going to copy this link and put it into the notes for you if you lose this screen. And you can find it in another spot. But what I'm saying is, at the moment, based on the basic WooCommerce, we have two options, free shipping and a flat rate. And that might not be the best for everyone. Let's say for the world, I'm charging 10. So they bought, they're buying one thing worth $1, but I'm charging them $10 to ship it. Whereas I'm selling one thing for $100, and I'm charging $10. So you see the flat rate is not the best, but it's the only options at the moment. And if we wanted more features, a live rate is the exact cost of shipping quoted from the shipper. It needs an extra plugin, which later we can check if it's free or not. Yes? How about for international That's what that says. Lo location's not in this zone. So we have the flat shipping for the US. Mm -hmm. And then anything not the US, we have that price. On a subsequent screen, we can make more zones saying, uh, we're going to focus on the Canada zone, and it's going to be that price. And then the Mexico zone, this price. And then the English, the England zone, that price. So we can further specify it, but right now on the Quick Start Wizard, it gives us those two options, which we can then fully customize a little later. So we'll say more plugins for more advanced shipping. Built in, WooCommerce can let you set up zones, shipping zones. Each zone will have its own cost. So there's this manual approach that I'm I'm gonna make some zones and set prices. 
or use a plugin that does it for me and then the plugin may or may not be free or it may let you make three zones for free but you need 12 zones and then that's when you pay ten dollars or or whatever so that's how that works overall here I'm just gonna set some values flat rate five dollars US flat rate ten dollars international I'm gonna use ounces and inches as the measurements so you can change it to other things if you want and then click continue recommended for your store is a specific theme that is focused on e-commerce so WooCommerce itself will recommend a certain theme that looks nice that functions well etc but you're free to go yourself to the theme repository and pick your own amazing theme it's just that here they have it set up that you can use their recommendation I'll leave that taxes that's another thing you've got to worry about what are the two things that everyone worries about in life death and taxes so WooCommerce covers at least taxes maybe not death but we've got here um, save time and errors with automated calculations and so forth so taxation and such for a long time things on the internet didn't have any taxation because they were not physical things uh, in the last five years or less uh, more legislatures coming out to to charge that because it is some amount of money that is being lost by the states or the federal government and such but then for us it's that now our business well we need to collect taxes and then when I do my taxes April 14th um, that's something I need to incorporate and need to talk to a professional. This is the part about if, if you're doing your taxes yourself via you know TurboTax or whatever, this is getting more complicated for you. And I don't have and I'm not a professional dealing with taxes. I'm not giving any advice. All that I'm saying is you need to talk to a tax professional once you're a business because this gets more complicated to do your taxes. And now with a physical, I mean with a digital store. Even though you you might be a physical location or not, that's a whole matter there that I can't really address. All I can say is probably you will have you will be taxing your products, and it will help you how to do that on the next screen. And would you like it to give you advanced reports about your sales and all of that good stuff? Probably yes. Do you also want to set up email campaigns so that when someone buys your product? They get an email that's saying, "Here's what sale. Here's what's on sale this week," or "Don't forget the sale coming up next week." So, for this class, I usually don't turn this one on just because it's an extra installation and an extra screen, and this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. It's more work for you because then you have to create email campaigns and monitor them and reply and all of that. And some people, yes, I want all that I can to make my online store success, but we don't have time really to really cover this. But MailChimp is one of the most famous uh, services to add advanced newsletter capabilities to your site. So I'm going to turn it off, but you can leave it on if you want and check the settings on your own. Even outside WordPress? Even though what? Even outside WordPress, is MailChimp especially for WordPress? Oh, MailChimp works outside of WordPress too. You don't need a WordPress site. You can go to MailChimp.com, and without a WordPress site, you can still use MailChimp. And Facebook. Enjoy all Facebook products combined in one extension. So if you do some selling on Facebook, nowadays Facebook gives you a basic shopping cart. If you have your basic catalog on Facebook, you can integrate it with your website. And it says Instagram shopping coming soon. This would install an extra plugin as well, right here. I, I won't bother with that just yet. That assumes you have a Facebook. That assumes you have a Facebook business page. That assumes you have products on your Facebook business page. Too many assumptions, so we're not using it at the moment. And I'll continue. So that's going to add one more plugin, install one more plugin, set a few settings, take us next to activate. OK, 
Okay, so then we get to this point. Your store is almost ready to activate services like the payment set setup or the automated taxes, printing labels. You will connect Jetpack. So Jetpack, that's another another feature over here. That's sort of like when I said, if you want to add PayPal, you need to go to PayPal.com and create an account, and then plug that in here. Well, Jetpack is similar to that. You go to Jetpack.com, you create an account, and then you link it. So we're, we're not going to take a detour to that, but I'll put it into the notes. That says, if you use, if you activated features that require a free Jetpack account, you need to create one and provide WooCommerce the, the email to connect. At the top it's telling me, you chose to turn on three plugins that do extra things. Well, in order for those to work properly, connect your Jetpack account. I don't have a Jetpack account, so there's a button there to do it. We're not going to do it in the lecture. You're going to do it on your own. And that's basically jetpack.com. Set up a free account to get all features. For us at the moment, there is a skip this step at the bottom. So we can't activate this yet. After you create a Jetpack account, you can do that later. I'll click Skip at the bottom. I have then the note ready. You're ready to start selling. Would you like to sign up for the newsletter so that they can send you tips, updates, inspiration, etc.? There is Create a Product, Import Products back to the dashboard, settings, and so forth. So I like this wizard, but it seems to be hard to get back to if you move away from it. And I like that there's a lot of like the quick buttons to do stuff, and even videos and such. So I'm going to copy these links into the notepad file to give you later, so that you can go back to those. Because most of us are going to get to this screen and click on one of these things, and then we, we won't be able to get back to the screen very easily. What I want to do, though, is click Visit Dashboard. I want to go back to the regular dashboard of our site. When we get back to the dashboard, we've got a few little items here. We've got this one, WooCommerce status. So we would see a brand new panel here when we log in, where at a glance we see what our sales are, how many orders need to be fulfilled, how many products are out of stock. So again, this goes back to, are you sure you want to become the next Amazon.com? Because then now you have to deal with this. You have to someone buys a product okay I've got to put the product in the mail and put a stamp on it and send it or I'm selling a service okay I got hired I need to put it in my calendar I need to not sleep in and go do it when they paid me for it so now you've got to fulfill what you are purporting to sell online and there may be orders that are on hold someone buys the product but their credit card is rejected or there may be products in your inventory that are running out Maybe I'm selling ebooks or music. Well, I won't really deal with that. It's a digital file. It's easily transferable. But there's a little control panel here with more details. And I'm going to note that there are several new screens to, to pay attention to when you've got a WooCommerce <coughs> powered website. New screens in your WordPress. We have in the dashboard, we have this WooCommerce status box. That's 
one thing. You get a quick view here, what's in here. You can click on these to get more details. Don't click on this yet, but if you click on it, you'll, you'll see more stats. So don't click on it. But you will see this, this here handy. Um, you see also a brand new WooCommerce menu screen with a whole bunch of stuff there. So a new menu item. On the left menu, we have a new thing, WooCommerce. left menu or main menu WooCommerce link right below WooCommerce there's something that wasn't there before what's what's below WooCommerce products that's new products link So below that we've got products. And then also, if we go to, um, this one's less obvious, click on pages so that we see all pages. Click on pages. We have the actual screens that people will see. Cart, checkout, my account, privacy and the shop screen, the catalog. So from pages, we have these new pages. Cart, checkout, my account, and shop. Privacy policy and sample were already there. And these are the screens where people will actually see something. When they're on the front end of the site, when they're visiting your site, they add a product to the cart. They will go to the cart screen, and then their stuff will be there. They can look up their past orders and such under my account. So, you know, all of these pages that you would normally see on any e commerce site, you have them now on your site. And then one more. If you click on plugins to look at all installed plugins, we have WooCommerce. It added Jetpack for us, WooCommerce PayPal, WooCommerce Services. So at the minimum, and then you might see MailChimp, you might see other things, Facebook, if you also activated those things. Now we've got more plugins than just the one that we chose of, of WooCommerce. They're all related to each other. Plugins, four new plugins for WooCommerce. And let's say I decide I, I don't want a plugin. Notice how some of them say deactivate and some say activate. This current one right here is not active. This one up here is not active. It's not doing anything on your site, but it is there living in your site. If I don't want to plug in, I just click delete under the plugins right here. If I've got a plugin that is running right now, I have to first deactivate it, and then that'll change to delete. So like I said about, you can have multiple plugins, you can test drive multiple ones. What I would recommend is to only have one plugin that does one thing. I wouldn't recommend to have two e-commerce plugins on the same site. I wouldn't recommend two slideshow plugins on the same site. They're both trying to do the same thing. They may conflict. So somewhere up on the notes I mentioned. Question? It came automatically with WordPress. It's just not active because you also need to connect it to Jetpack. So you need the free Jetpack account. You turn that on and then it'll give you spam protection. But it's not on by default because you first need a Jetpack account. 
So we had the um, okay plugins or mini apps, etc. I'll make a note here on our previous. Let's say uh, I recommend to only have one app that does one thing at a time. So I would not have two e-commerce plugins or two shopping carts. Uh, or, or two slideshows or two chat systems just have one plugin that does the one thing you can test them multiple ones you can turn them on and off and test them but I would not have two running at the same I would not have two active at the same time there might be conflict and remove any not being used Okay, so all of this is in the dashboard. All of this is what I see in the admin screen. We'll look at these in, a, in, a de in detail in a moment. I want to go see what does this look like for my users. We've been spending all of this time in the back end, in the dashboard, in the admin screen. How do we go to the screen of what the user will see? Local yep, you can type the address localhost slash WordPress or you can click on visit site. So local local slash WordPress is what they will see, or you can click also to visit your site. Let's do that. Go ahead and click visit site on the name of your website at the top left corner. Hover over that, visit site. So here's our site. Looks a little plain. I need to start to put in some cool graphics and fill in my text and all that good stuff. But then I've got here my search products. That's nice. I've got at the top. Let's go look at the cart. There's nothing in the cart yet. Okay, I can't check out yet. I, ha I don't have anything in that I've got in the cart. My account. Well, I'm the admin. I'm logged in as the admin, so I would see that. But if a person created an account to buy your product, they would see their own orders and downloads. All of that completely set up automatically. Yes, we've spent this amount of time just to set it up. But once it's set up, all of this is pretty automatic. And then we've got the shop screen. Well, there's no products yet. This is what the user would see. And the design of this is pretty plain. It's like a, it's this simple template that just is very utilitarian. But after I go and add my own customization, we have an option here you can explore later, customize my design, change my colors or fonts or layout and such, then you can make it your own. You could also search for themes. Remember we can add themes, change themes, and then on a different design, further customize it. Let's go back to the dashboard. So you can hover over again your name of your app and go back to the dashboard. And we'll practice adding one product. I want to add a new product. There are at least two ways to do it from here. Can anyone figure out one way to add a new product from here? There is a products link. There is a products link. Add new. Yep. So one way is products link, add new. Another way is we have this sort of universal new button at the top. Hover over that, new product. So those are the two main ways, product add new or new product. Select one of those. Let's add a new product. We have a lot of boxes here to fill in. I will explain most of them. And a lot of them are very straightforward. What's the name of the product here? So for the purposes of the class, I've got a fake business, Victor's Bakery. And I say I'm going to sell, let's sell a, um, let's sell churros. Is that two R's or one R? Churros? Two R's? Yeah. 
churros. So let's sell some churros. Um, let's add a description. What's a, what's a good description to entice people to buy this? Warm, tasty, crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside, etc., etc. I would write something about this product. I could insert a picture here as well. I could put bullet points about my product. I could get really complex and detailed about my product. But I'm just going to add something. Warm, tasty, crunchy on the outside. Our recipe. These are the traditional. Again, you don't have to really write anything that detailed. You can just write gibberish. Traditional, etc. So this is pretty straightforward. The name of the product, description of the product, some styling, like bolding, bullet points, whatever. What if I want to like change the color of something? We have a few more extra editing options hidden right here. We have them we have these common editing options, and then we have toolbar. If you open that, you get a few more editing options, such as maybe you want to set the text color. So that's hidden under that under under that final icon. Maybe to get advanced, you select something and add a link. You can link that to some other screen on your site or some other website completely. So it's half word processor, half web editor right here. On the right side, we have a little box related to publishing. We'll publish it eventually, or we can save a draft. As I'm working hard so far, I can save that. It's not publishing yet. There's something here about categories. I'll cover categories in just a moment, but this is to organize ourselves. We'll come back to categories soon. And then we've got tags related to that. I'll come back to that in a moment. On the right side further, I see product image. So it might be a little hard to visualize, but let's say a person was in our shop screen. They would see a bunch of thumbnails of the product. Then they click on a product to see the details. I'm writing the details right here. I'm writing the, the description and, and so forth. Well, that thumbnail that would appear on the shop screen comes from here, adding a product image. Now, I, I want to put a sample image here, but I don't think we have any images available on these computers like we used to. So we can get an, an image from the web if you want to practice, but let me just check something. We can borrow these flowers. And find picture of churros. Let's, let's do that maybe. Let's find pictures. So uh, if you want to open a new tab or a new window and just search for churros. And if you find a picture somewhere, and it's for educational purposes, I will borrow in a, a picture from the internet. But for a real purpose of a real website, I wouldn't. I would shoot my own photos. I would. You know, photograph my own product on the real internet. If your website were on the real internet, you want to use your own original photos. Don't borrow, aka steal them from the internet. You want to have your own original photos. So if I go up to images, I'll see a variety of them. This one looks good, just whatever. I'm going to find one and try to click it to download it. So if you download an image and then here under product image, click set product image and the file that I downloaded, I'm going to upload it.
product gallery if you want to upload like three different photos of your product it'll automatically make a little thumbnail gallery for this product so they can see the front side the left side the back side the top side whatever <coughs> of your product so that would require that you have multiple photos and you add them to the gallery and then it would do it for you and there's a middle box here product data let me skip it for a moment and the final item here product short description so depending on the theme when a person is looking at your shop screen, it may show various things. It may show your products in different ways. Depending on your theme, you may see this short description visible at the same time that you see the thumbnail. And on some themes, it won't. It'll show that description elsewhere. People that create these themes or companies that create themes, the design of your site, there is no like set standard about everything must always be the same. So one theme, one design, might show the product description right away in the, in the thumbnail view. And some might show it when you hover over it. Or some might show it not at all. But this is just another spot to add a short description and some more text about your product. We'll say one bag of churros fresh from the oven. So then the final box here is one of the most important, but it's also pretty complex. We have product data. Simple product, grouped product, external, variable. So we'll start with simple. Then we have virtual, downloadable. And some of these have pop-ups that explain. Virtual products are intangible and are not shipped. That would be perfect for the services that I'm selling. It's a product that doesn't have shipping. Notice when I turn that on, the shipping box turns off. There's no need to ship anything. Downloadable is similar, although I'm surprised if you click downloadable, it doesn't automatically turn off shipping. I guess you turn both of them on. But downloadable then gives you a link. OK, where, where, what's the file they're going to download? Upload your music file, upload your recipe, your PDF file, your ebook here so that then they can download it. Well, in my case, Victor's Bakery, it's a real cupcake that I'm going to ship. It's a real bag of churros that I'm going to ship them. So leave it as simple product. It's not virtual. It's not downloadable. I would love to be able to do download churros whenever I want, but that's not possible yet. Maybe 3D print them one day, right? Edible 3D printing. Regular price, sale price. So right now, how much would a bag of churros cost. What should we decide? What's that? Ten dollars? Is it the most tasty bag of churros ever? If they're more than a dollar, I think it's too much, isn't it? I'm thinking about how much do they cost at the border, but I guess over here, um, I don't know, let's just put five dollars. Um, well, we have also the ability to do sale price. Today, this is on sale for three dollars. And what do you think this means here? Schedule. The days. This sale is scheduled to start here and end here. So if I start a sale and forget to turn it off a month later, and someone comes back to my product that I forgot about, you're selling it for the sale price. So if you do a sale price, you probably will set a uh, start and end date you don't have to do a sale price, of course. Just leave it empty. Don't put zero, because it's on sale for zero dollars. Put nothing. This can be changed, of course, at any time. Can you set it up just like one day of the week? It should be. You mean for it to automatically be on sale one day a week? Uh -huh. From what I understand right here, no. That might be part of the extra feature of the plugin to have a recurring sale 
Like yeah. Um, from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't seem to be that you can do it from here. I'm sure the plugin is capable of doing that with one of the extra features somewhere. Maybe they get more options over here. Taxable, most likely you're going to do taxation. Are you going to charge them shipping only, no taxation? Again, I don't have an answer for you what to put here. This is going to be up to you and your tax professional. Your CPA, your business partner, whoever. Tax class, how is this going to be shipped? I'm going with standard, standard US, re reduced rate. There's some little question mark here and there about how does this work. But again, this is going to be what you figure out with your, with your tax preparer. I'm going to save a draft. Make more changes. So then we have on the left side, this is a simple product, but then on the left side we have many more options for it. The most basic is how much does it cost. But then, depending on your product, we have inventory, SKU or SKU, stock, keep, stock keeping unit is, is something that matters to some people. But this is your way to track your inventory in your QuickBooks or your Excel spreadsheet or wherever, what, however. Maybe with Victor's Bakery, you know, in my point of service, point of sale system, I have cakes, you know, our CK1. Cake number one is the chocolate chip cake, and cake number two is the cherry cake. I'm selling churros, so this is CHR01, which is the small bag, or 02, which is the big bag. This is completely optional. There's nothing required to put here. This is for you. What is your system that you keep track of products in your system? Or if you don't, that's fine. You don't need to put anything here. This is an advanced concept to keep track of what product is what in your own inventory system. Manage stock, turning that on, will say I only have 10 of this item to sell. And when it gets down to two, our left, I'll get an email that me, the admin, will say you've got two of, the, of this product left. Be, be aware. If I don't have a limited quantity, I can make churros all day long. Well, I don't need to manage stock. I can keep making more of them. But if I'm doing like pottery, and I've got only three of those plates, I should manage the stock, set these values as they make sense. What do you think? Allow back orders. What is that about? Do we allow people to buy a product that is not in stock? do not allow is the default here. When this product runs out, I can't sell it anymore. Do not allow. Or allow, but notify customer. So this is completely up to, to you to decide, will you charge them for the product even though it's out of stock, but they're going to get an email that says it's out of stock at the moment. You've been charged, but you will get it as soon as it's back in stock. Or allow. I guess I would never really do the allow. Um, we might figure out ideas why, but to me it doesn't make sense to allow but not let them know it ran out. Are there any use case scenarios for that? If we're dealing with a real product and it ran out, yeah, you bought it, but you get no notification that, it, that there's no, none of them. So probably do not allow, don't sell things you don't have. If you manage stock. The item currently is in stock or out of stock or back ordered. So if you allow things that go out of stock, it will sort of automatically set itself up to let them know that it's out of stock. If you're not managing how many you have, if like maybe today you're not selling them, you can put it out of stock. And those other ones. Sold individually, 
I, I have one product that I'm selling. There's only one of it. Enable this to only allow one of this. Uh, oh no, actually, not. If you have one of them, you put it in manage, and then you put one. What this one is about is you will automatically have the ability. They will see churros, and then they will say add one or seven to the cart. So if you only want them to add one of them at a time per order, you can turn that one on to say you can only add one of this thing to your cart at a time. If you want to limit it to only three per sale, well, the option is not here, and it's probably an extra option, is what I'm saying. This out of the box works very well. But then some of these like edge cases or like really advanced features, most likely is going to be under the get more aka pay a little bit more for it. The free one is great, but extra features you pay. So that was inventory. We'll look at a couple more, then we'll take, <coughs> then we'll take a break. Uh, shipping. So here is again where I don't have an answer for you, but the straightforward aspect of this is, is how much does this thing weigh? How's it going to be shipped? Um, there are no classes, shipping classes set because you need to go over to the shipping settings, WooCommerce settings, which we'll look at later. But if this weighs, you know, 10 ounces or however much that is, that's going to be set up for for how much it'll cost to send it to people. And then linked product. So we have upsells and cross sells. And then explanation here, upsells. OK, so let's say they're going to buy the basic churro package. Um, we have, I have, I have to have first created another product which is like the churro combo, which comes with the churro and the dipping sauce, let's say. Let's say I sell them separately. But a person can buy this one for $5, or they can be upsold. You need to have more products for this to work. But we can upsell them to, instead of buying the $5 one, why don't you buy the $7 one? And then you also get the sauce, the dipping sauce. The dipping sauce costs me 10 cents to make, so I'm making lots of money out of that. So the upsell is about that. Instead of buying this one, why not buy this one? Usually the more expensive one, usually not extremely expensive, but the more expensive one. You upsell them. Why don't you buy the one that's up, more expensive? Cross-selling uh, is related to products which promote in the cart. So if I bought the churros and then they're ready to go check out, the cart will tell them, don't forget to buy this. So it's not required to buy the other product. But it recommends, why don't you also buy this other product? And again, this is set up. This You can complete this by first having other products that you can connect to each other. So we don't have anything to do here because we don't have any other products yet. Actually, we can look at these last two, then we'll take a break. Attributes, we don't really have much to do just yet. Attributes is going to be related when we do a variable product. Let's say I'm selling t-shirts. I'm going to sell t-shirts that are that are that have variables. How might a t-shirt vary? Color size. Color size. Exactly. I might sell a red shirt, a yellow shirt, a pink shirt, a blue shirt. Those are variables of the shirt and sizes. Large, small, medium, child size, adult size. Those are variables. That's a little more complex than we can do at the moment because right now I'm selling churros. Am I selling the one dozen of them or two dozen or one bag, big bag, small bag, whatever? But under attributes, coupling it with being a variable product and doing a little bit of setup, we will be able to sell the red shirt version in extra large or the yellow shirt in small. But that's what attributes is about. Advanced purchase note. We enter an optional note to send the customer after purchase. Here's the part where we can send them a message about thank you for buying our product. 
We will ship it out as soon as possible. Don't forget to tell your friends on Facebook and whatever note you want to give them as soon as they buy. The order of the products that will appear in the menu is alphabetical unless you want to put them in a specific order. Do you want people to review your product? This one is on by default, but I sort of feel like for most of us, for most of the clients that I've worked with, they right away want to turn that off. And it's kind of hidden in here, and you have to do it product by product that you turn off reviews. People will be able to give your products five stars, one star, and write something about it. So this is on by default. And I think it's valuable, but people are often scared about, they're going to write something negative about my product. So you could turn it off in the beginning, and as you get more famous, and sell more products, and then maybe get on your social media game and ask for reviews, the positive ones or whatever, you can turn that on and let them review. You get more options, here's these other extensions. How many you can buy maximum, more ways to do variations, let customers pay what they want, use for donations tips and more and then you would go off to that to learn it and this is a $49 extension that then gives you more we have the tips. that one is under get more options and it's the name your price so there's still more we can do with this product, but let's say we'll publish the product, and then I want to see what it looks like for the user, and then we'll take a break. So go back to the top to publish. We will visit site. This is a brand new product that it's in our shop screen. Here it is, our very first product. It has the photo, the title of it, $5, add to cart. You can click on the actual product and show you the details of the product. The title, the price, the short description in this case of this plugin is visible first. The long description is down here. I want to add a few of them to my cart. It's going to be an office party. It's not categorized. We'll deal with category soon enough. Here's the description. This has no reviews yet. So built in there, very nice. If your picture is big, it's a high, if it's a high quality picture, it also gets the ability right here to zoom in automatically see all of the detail you can click on the little magnifying glass instead view it that way if I add to cart this has been added to the cart the website automatically then says you have one thing in your cart on the top right. Then when you hover over, you get a preview of it. We have view cart, checkout, pay. You can also go to the cart link at the top. Here's what's in my cart so far. We have a system for coupons. I can add more, I can remove it from the cart, update cart, I can check out, I'm just showing you in general the, the usual process that you would do on any e-commerce site. Now on your own site people would be seeing this and it automatically has what's your what's your billing details, your name, your all of that. This is going to be set up through PayPal. Pay via PayPal. You can pay with your credit card if you don't have a PayPal. So it'll automatically set that up. The reason we provide in the settings 
the reason we set up PayPal is for it to basically transact the money and collect the money and give it to us. But the system here itself will take care of all of that to, to be able to pay. We're going to do a break in one moment. Um, about the taxes, where is the show? Oh, right. I, never, I didn't set up the full tax system, so it doesn't show that. But once it's fully set up, it would be listed right here under taxing. So we will, you know that area where you show us that um, you have enough stock? Back over here on the on this sort of thing. Uh, yes, within when when you click on any of these to go see details, mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to be basically also here under my reports. So okay. it'll be reporting and giving you details of everything about the sale. Okay. So right now we're just kind of exploring it and. Um, so this is an error processing it because your PayPal is not a real, uh, real account and such. But if it was a real account, I could, uh, you know, get paid pretty easily. So let's take one more break just to see if all of this is set up properly, and and then when we come back, we'll explore adding a few more products and such. But yes, there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of screens, there's a lot of things to do. But again. This is a very advanced type of website. It's not just a website that here's my name and my phone number and my contact info. This is now a full featured cart with you know credit card processing and products and inventory and all that complicated stuff. But it's it'll be worth it once you're able to sell your products online. Calling your own shots, not having to be at the at the whim of some other company like doing it on eBay or Etsy where they charge me just to have a listing or whatever, or their fees. You know, I still have to deal with a variety of these things, shipping and handling and all of that, but being my own entrepreneur and letting myself do it myself might give me more control of my own results. So it's 11.50, we'll take a break until 12, and then we'll be back in a moment.